Welcome friends, William Newell back with you again and tonight I'm in Castle Caulfield just outside Dungannon. Castle Caulfield is a beautiful village set in a very picturesque area. It is lovely all year round but particularly in the summer months when the local horticultural society along with the people of the village make a huge effort to create something really spectacular as they line the streets with a wonderful and colourful display of floral glory. The village has been the recipient of many awards, including last year when it received the Gold Champion of Champions Award in Britain in Bloom. But today is Monday Thursday, and I am conducting the service in Castle Caulfield Methodist Church. The word Monday is actually derived from the first words of the traditional Latin anthem, Mandatum Novum Dovobus, which means in the words of Jesus, a new commandment I give unto you. What is the new commandment which, which Jesus gives? Well, John chapter 13, verse 34 tells us, and it reads like this. On this night, our Lord Jesus Christ said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love each other as I have loved you. Considering this commandment, let us begin by confessing our sins to God. Let us pray. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you, against our neighbour and against each other, in thought, word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image within us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out of darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Friends, I'm not used to preaching in an empty church and I'm aware there's somewhat of an echo. I apologize for that and I thank you for bearing with me. But on one occasion many years ago, an English man was on holidays in the highlands of Scotland. He was rambling through the hills, enjoying the scenery and the spectacular views. A local shepherd was in the same area and in the course of things, the two men met and they started to walk along together to the summit of a particular hill. It was beautiful, but extremely remote. Inevitably, the two men exchanged words with each other. The Englishman talked quickly while the shepherd spoke slowly, as though weighing every word. Presently, the upward track they were on brought them to a certain vantage point where they could look over a vast expanse of heather and grass. You know what it is like to be alone, the Englishman remarked, gazing out at the silent immenseness. Aye, said the shepherd. There'll be days when you don't see a soul up here. Aye, said the shepherd. Yet I dare say you prefer it to living in a city. I do indeed, said the shepherd. I never like being lonely. There was a long pause as the tourist tried to puzzle out this odd reply. It didn't make sense. How could you be lonely in a big city like Birmingham? where he was from, where there are lots of people around you. But the shepherd went on to explain, I never could abide loneliness. I have a son in Glasgow and I go there from time to time. I might stay down there for a couple of nights, but I always feel lonely around a lot of people that I don't know and who don't know me. So I'm back in the glens as soon as I can. The Englishman nodded to indicate he understood, but he said, look around you, there's not a house in sight, not a soul to be seen. When I leave, there'll be nobody to talk to. 
I said to shepherd, that's true. But then his eyes began to sparkle and he went on. But at least God will have the chance to talk to me. Friends, sometimes we do need to draw aside from the busyness of life to take time out with God and ask ourselves, what is it that God wishes to say to me? Because God does speak to us. Only we are, we are often too busy to listen. And yes, friends, I know. This is Easter. And this, is, this Easter is different to any other. In fact, to a certain extent, it hardly feels like Easter. Today is Monday, Thursday. We would normally have our church service when we would think of our Lord sharing the Passover with his disciples. And afterwards, we would share the sacrament of Holy Communion. It's always a very special occasion. But of course, we can't do that tonight in the normal way. But it's still Holy Week, nevertheless. And we can still take time to be quiet in God's presence, to thank him for his death on the cross when he took our punishment. We can still celebrate his resurrection knowing that because Christ rose from the dead, so shall we, if we are born again. We can look forward to his coming again, because the Lord has promised to come back, to receive us unto himself. Yes, Easter will be different. But in the quietness, can I encourage you to take some time to reflect over what Jesus did for you on Good Friday? And what Easter Sunday means to you, that Jesus is alive, that he was raised from the dead, and that he is coming again. And most of all, to ask ourselves, how do I stand in God's sight? Because he is the one to whom we shall give account. That's the question I leave for, with you. And now we conclude our time with the Lord's Prayer. Join with me. As we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bye, friends. Join with me again tomorrow night for our Good Friday service. Bye. And every blessing.